click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends uh, let's see the problem first in the last problem we saw two products and profit maximization in this problem we have three products and we have to maximize the profit let's see the problem first and then we'll proceed further A company makes three products X, Y, and Z that flows through three departments: drill, lath, and assembly. So there are again three different processes: drilling, lathing, and then assembly. The hours of the department time required by each of the products, the hours available in each of the departments, and the profit contribution of each of the products are given in the following table. So we have got three products. Product X requires three hours of drilling, three hours of lath, and eight hours of assembly. Product Y requires three six hours of drilling, five hours of lath, and ten hours of assembly. And product Z requires seven hours of drilling, four hours of lath, and twelve hours of assembly. And we have also given the profit per unit on the right hand side. So normally we always prefer to write the products in the columns. But in this problem, we are already given in the problem itself the products in the rows. So we won't change the structure of the problem. Let the table remain as it is. In this case, my products are placed in the rows. Let them be in the rows. And we are uh, we are given the time available or the hours available for each of the three departments: drilling, lath, and assembly. The marketing department of the company indicates. That the sales potential for X and Y is unlimited, but for product Z it is only thirty units. So the maximum demand for product Z is thirty, but there is no such limit or no such condition for X and Y. You can sell as many quantity you can make for X and Y, but not for Z. For Z it is very clear. You can sell maximum thirty units. In other words, as a manufacturer, I won't make more than thirty units of Z because if I make more than thirty units, the remaining units beyond thirty will remain unsold. So formulate this as a linear problem. Problem. They haven't specified anywhere whether this is a maximization problem or minimization problem, and we need to understood. Uh, we need to understand this from the problem that because we are given the profit per unit, it is a maximization problem. So since we are already given a ready-made table, I won't make the table again in the solution. Uh, moreover, just a uh, note of caution for you: making the table in the solution is not mandatory. It's just a part and parcel of our working, which can be skipped in case you have. Very limited time in the exam, so let's try to work it out. We have got three constraints for the three resources, and then we have a demand constraint for product Z. First, we'll make the assumption. Let x one units of product X. X two units of product Y and X three units of product Z are manufactured or I will say produced. This is our basic assumption. Now my objective function. My objective function will be to maximize the profit. Z equals to how much will be my profit? Now, what we have made an assumption that we are making x one units of product x, x two units of product y, and x three units of product z. So my profit per unit is nine rupees multiplied by x one. 
15 rupees multiplied by x2 and 20 rupees multiplied by x3. So this will be 9x1 plus 15x2 plus 20x3. So this is my profit and we need to take into account the three constraints for three resources, the drilling, lath and assembly, which will be 3x1 plus 6x2 plus 7x3. 3x1 plus 6x2 plus 7x3 and my total time available is 210 hours. It can't be beyond 210 hours. So 3x1 plus 6x2 plus 7x3 subject to by writing subject to we are putting the constraints or we are putting the conditions my first condition as discussed 3x1 plus 6x2 plus 7x3 less than equal to 210 my second constraint will be for lath 3x1 plus 5x2 plus 4x3 less than equals to 240 3x1 plus 5x2 plus 4x3 less than equals to 240 and my third constraint will be for assembly that is 8x1 plus 10x2 plus 12x3 8x1 plus 10x2 plus 12x3 less than equals to 260. These are my three resources constraint, resource 1, resource 2, resource 3 that is drilling, lath and assembly and now we are going to put the demand constraint. Now there is, as such as we already discussed in the problem, there is no demand constraint for product X and Y. You can sell as much quantity as you want. The sales potential for the product X and Y is unlimited as the problem specifies. So you can sell as much quantity as you want for product X and Y. But for product Z, the marketing department indicates that for product Z, you can sell only 30 units. Aap 30 se jada sell nahi kar sakte ho. That means my product Z ka assumption tha X3. My X3 cannot be more than 30. So it will be either equal to 30 or less than 30. This is my demand constraint. So we have three resource constraint and a demand constraint. And now to make the problem practically possible or realistic, we will have non-negativity constraints. For non-negativity constraints, we will write x1, x2 and x3 our basic assumptions. They cannot be negative. That means they will be either equal to 0 or more than 0. Point to be noted friends, uh, students often take non-negative constraint as a formality and they may ignore them in the exam. But then, mind it, if you don't write the non-negative constraint, you are going to lose the marks. So do, do, do always write the non-negative constraints in the exam to make your solution complete. Without them, the solution will remain incomplete. So we had an assumption, we had an objective function, we had a constraint, and at last we had the non-negativity constraint. That's it. This was the problem. Uh, do subscribe to our channel. Thank you.